Here's Lourdes Bacon, the hitting 350 at the top of the order. Yvette, as we look at the numbers for ULM, just to illustrate their lack of home run power in the lineup today, they only have a total of six home runs. Brown and Edwards lead the way with two apiece. So this is not a team that normally threatens the fence. No, that might be one of the smaller numbers we've seen this year. But boy, they run bases. They are off to the races when they get on. Here's the 2-0 pitch. That gets a piece of the outside corner. The outfield is perhaps a step or two pulled in toward the infield and off to the left side a little bit. There's a gap in right center and down the right field line. Casanova has fallen behind now, three and one. She's two and zero oh with a very nice ERA of 1.02. This is her fourth start. She's had two complete games, but has only worked 13 and two thirds innings. And a little looper over the head of Pleasance Ball's finds the backside of the infield and drops for a base hit. Ball's got eyes, and we talked about the, the stolen bases for the Warhawks. Miss Bacon has 18 stolen bases, been thrown out one time. Could I say she's been frying around the bases? What's better than Bacon, huh? 18 of 19 on the base paths is Bacon. She bluffs the run. The Tigers have been very good about stopping the running game from opposing teams, but we haven't seen Hannah Carson behind the plate in a few games here. Just the transfer from Michigan who unfortunately blew her knee out in the second game of the year last year. Second game of the season. Two strikes on Platt who is the leading hitter. At 413, she lobs this one down on the left side. Maddox McKee backs up and moves to her left. And you see those two leadoff uh, slappers for the Warhawks are just touch slappers. Well, the sky today is sooty. 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 It's not sooty. It's not Let's call it sooty. sooty. It's not sugar cane season, is it? No, Where no, they're burning no. cane, so uh, no, uh, that's uh. not it. There were some darker clouds around the ballpark earlier. We're not really supposed to have rain. It's supposed to miss us, so let's hope the weatherman is, his 50-50 chance at weather is correct. Thunderstorms. Possibly coming in around 7 o'clock, 76 degrees right now. Shut your face, Lynn. Here's Megan Brown. <laughs> Megan Brown is hitting 347. There are four 300 or better hitters in this lineup. Bacon, Platt, and Brown to open it, and then you go down to the six hole hitter in Brooklyn Lippert. She's Brown, hitting 304. Brown's got six doubles and she's second on the team with uh, 28 RBIs. She's nine of 10 with stolen bases. Call a buddy, tell him the game's on ULM out of Monroe, Louisiana. And the LSU Tigers. The one two pitch is tight. The Tigers have been nationally ranked the entire season. They've been as high as number two during that 24 game winning streak to open the year. And right now for the second consecutive week they are seventh in the land. Opened up hotter than a firecracker and then kind of hit a little low and then looked dynamite this weekend. Three balls, two strikes. We'll keep an eye on Bacon at first base. There's one out. She's running, and that pitch is banged off the leg of the pitcher, Casanova. Runners at first and third now. And I'm going to tell you what happened. Pleasance was going for the steal, so 
hitter, uh, runner was running on the pitch. Ball deflected off of Casanova's leg and had Pleasance been in her usual spot, but she was going down to take the throw. It's, there you see it. She was wrong footed as she was covering second base. Yeah, she thought it was a steal and she was going for that play. Beth Tarina out of the uh, bullpen, out of the dugout quickly. But well, she's checking on Casanova to how, how much the game has improved. That's and a, a run. line drive into the left field corner. It's rolling to the wall. One Warhawk scores. And pulling up at second base with an RBI double is Andy Edwards. And the Warhawks have three base hits and a run. And two Warhawks in scoring position with only one out. That's her seventh double of the year. Let's see where this pitch is. I think that's supposed to be a drop ball, and it was very much elevated. And kudos to the Warhawks. They are jumping on mistakes. So a base hit by Bacon on a looper to left field to start the game. Platt hit a weak pop up down to McKee at third base. Brown singled off the pitcher and Edwards has rammed an RBI double into the left field corner. And there is bullpen activity for LSU with Layla Thompson at the plate. She's from nearby Gonzales, Louisiana. So I suspect Layla has family yeah. and friends here. I'm looking down that third base line. I'm sure that there's a few family and friends over there. I'm filming her at bat right now. The one two pitch dips out of the strike zone. Casanova, one of the hardest workers on the team. Beth Torino always saying that she deserves anything good that comes her way. Well, she hasn't pitched much. No, she hasn't. She got a five inning start against Memphis on February 10th and did not allow a run. She only allowed two base hits. Then on the 24th of February, two weeks later, she had a five inning start against Austin P, giving up three hits and no runs. Casanova coming to the plate with it. And she makes the tag. So a fielder's choice. Brown is cut down trying to score. Edwards ran to third. And Thompson on the fielder's choice winds up at second base. Good job defensively here. Checks the runner at third. Got yourself in a rundown and they execute that rob of facilitating how fast they judge the uh, the play. So we'll get the announcement right here. After review, the play stands, no obstruction. The runner was clearly beaten by the throw. So two outs. A run in on the RBI double by Edwards. She's now at third base. Thompson on the two base fielder's choice is at second and Brooklyn Lippert is at the plate. Lippert's got the Michael Jackson look going with the one glove. <laughs> and a split grip. And it's a white glove. She has played very short by the outfielders and off to the left side. They almost have become infielders. Casanova would really like to start working ahead here. No question about that. The Warhawks have found three base hits in the first and lead by a one nothing score. The two strike pitch. Way up off the glove of Carson. That's going to be a wild pitch. And ULM has taken a 2 0 lead. Casanova just left that one way upstairs. Carson did her best, but could not make the play. Been a sloppy start for LSU. Yeah, Casanova working on that rise ball. 
And it uh, really gets away from her. That's the first wild pitch she's uncorked this year. She takes the comebacker, throws it low, but Gutierrez is there. And the Tigers. And in the circle for the Warhawks, it's Victoria Edwards. And if that name sounds a bit, uh, excuse me, Victoria Abrams. And if that name sounds a little familiar, she's a former Tiger. Yes, she is. We're going to see a drop, a screw, a rise, a change, and a curve. Her highest velocity is 64, and her change will come in at about 50 miles an hour. Beth Torino should know what she throws. She's nine and six on the year. This is her 17th start. She's had three complete games and her 22nd appearance of the season. 79 innings, 70 hits have been uh, allowed. 39 walks, 58 strikeouts. The opponents are batting 232 against former Tiger Victoria Abrams to with a 266 ERA. To show that change up there. She left LSU after the 2020 season. She only pitched in two innings that year. That was the COVID shortened season. And there's a strike. Ooh, that was low. To Newland. ULM pitching has been susceptible to yielding home runs. They've given up 22. But more importantly, perhaps, they've given up 10 home runs in the last 10 games. And then so they've only hit how many? As a team, well, only six in the lineup have Ooh. been struck by the uh, starters today for ULM. Abrams has been reached six times with home run balls. The 3 2 pitch to Allie Newland, who's been sensational defensively. And really, really good offensively. Well, that was Here's a, a drive up. deep to right field. You can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Home run number seven. Allie Newland now leads the team. RBI number 32. That's a pair behind Pleasance. And she hits a line drive over the right center field wall to open the game for LSU. That changeup was elevated. She had thrown one earlier, and I thought, ooh, she better get that pitch down. And Watch this. Allie Newland says, I like hitting the ball over the fence lately. Well, that was a letter high off speed pitch, and Yvette, you are absolutely correct. She recognized it from the moment it left the hand and then waited to belt it. Here's Sierra Briggs, and it's two to one. Briggs is the team leader with 39 base hits. That's just one more than Newland, whose 38th base hit this year was her seventh homer. How much fun you think Newland is having right now playing softball? Well, she right now is playing with an All-America status. And doing matching it in the outfield with her glove. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Chopped off the plate foul. Trying to stay away from Briggs with her screwball. You know what else about Newland? She's been a regular. This is her 34th start. She's had over 100 at bats. She has struck out only four times. Can you say she's a tough out? How about your leadoff hitter hitting the ball over the fence? There's no chance to get Briggs when she chops it off that hard dirt on the left side. It's almost always a base hit. Yeah, really defensively, there is not much you can do with this play. Here's Taylor Pleasance hitting 319. A team leading 34 driven in. And a team leading 20 walks. And Taylor Pleasance also is a player who very infrequently strikes out. Like Newland, she has only fanned four times 
in nearly 100 at bats. The outfield is extremely deep. Bacon and Lippert and Brown are nearly scratching their backs on the fence. Now that I understand playing Taylor Pleasance deeply like they're doing, but if the ball's hit over their head, it's, it's going to be a home fit. run. So yeah. to me, you don't give up that much ground. Guess they're refusing to get burnt over their heads. But if it's hit over their head, it, I don't think they're going to catch yeah, it. Yeah, it's over the fence. Oh, that's a pretty good pitch, but She's it missed thrown. outside. I think he called it a strike. Did he? Yeah, the it's 2-2. Two, two. Telling Blue that you might have the count wrong. They're going to reset the scoreboard. I think it's 2-2, two and two, and now they get it level at 2. Briggs at first base. She's thrown two good pitches in this at bat. Let's see if she can come back from that home run. She's got to just keep the ball down. Newland got a high change up and hit a liner over the right center field wall. Briggs chopped a single off the dirt on the left side and it's Pleasance at the plate with a count of two balls and two strikes. Raylene Gutierrez is on deck. Here we go at 2 2. Off the mark. Nope. Rung her oh, up. Oh, I thought they called a ball, but no. A third strike looking. That's a rarity. Well, again, that's three good pitches in this at bat, and that's what she's got to do string good pitches together. And <laughs> Taylor you saw Pleasance, Pleasance's expression she's like, like, oh, no. Wow. Gutierrez takes a hack at the first one. Warhawks, there goes Newland. No, that's not Newland. Briggs, Briggs gets the stolen base, and she picked a good pitch on which to she run. Did. That was an off-speed pitch. It was a change up. The Warhawks uh, field at a 966 clip. 34 errors on the season. That's the 10th stolen base for Briggs in 11 tries. Blunt is two for eight in throwing out base runners. Nicely done by Blunt to keep okay. that ball playable. We've only thrown four base runners out all year. Gutierrez is on a 19 game on base streak for LSU and that pitch bounces by Blunt. The wild pitch moves Brig to third. Looks like they call the same pitch back to back and didn't work either time. A screwball that just just overthrowing that pitch. The 19 consecutive games to reach base safely by Gutierrez is a team high. It's a season high and a career high for Raylene. And Raylene was paying attention because that ball was a strike to Pleasance in the last at bat. Three balls, two strikes on Gutierrez. She has exploded offensively from her previous output. Her eight doubles lead the team, 28 driven in, 33 base hits. And a chop to the first baseman. Gutierrez trying to get there. She does not in time. But Briggs scores easily, and Gutierrez gets the RBI to tie the game. And she's done this all season long. Very positive at bat. So Newland and Briggs have scored. We are tied at two. And here's Kelly Lynch. Lynch is hitting 270. Kelly this Lynch. is her 27th start. And of course, she's available available in the circle as well. I'd say Lynch is the number two pitcher right now for the Tigers. Been a very good pickup because she very effective in the circle and she has come up with some big at bats for the Tigers in huge games. Very much agreed. 
The outfield deep and straight away not quite as deep as it was on Pleasance but pretty far back in the outfield. Here's the one one pitch to Kelly Lynch. That's tight. Try to sneak that screw screwball in. Lynch sends a ground ball to the shortstop L Carter and Carter. So Karis Plant who hits in the number two spot tonight has had a heck of a year so far. It's Buck it's blunt and it's Carter the bottom third of the order against Emily Casanova who surrendered three hits and a couple of runs in the first inning. A base hit by Bacon. A one out base hit by Brown. An RBI double by Edwards. And she scored on a wild pitch. She's an all American scholar athlete. Emily Casanova. That is laudable. The two one. Pulled foul. LSU will travel to Gainesville this weekend. April 6th, 5 o'clock start Central Time. April 7th, a 1 o'clock start Central Time. April 8th, a 6 p.m. Nice start. Nice play by Casanova. Buck is retired. Pitcher to first. I think that series is a Saturday, Sunday, Monday. 6th, 7th, and 8th of April. Drop ball hit right back at Casanova. There's plenty of television coverage. It's an ESPN game on the 6th, ESPNU on the 7th, and the SEC Network on the 8th. So the Tigers in Florida draw the Monday night slot this weekend in the SEC. Blunt takes ball one inside. Madison Blunt, the catcher. Off to a slow start offensively, hitting 108. This is her 19th start. Casanova falls behind 2 0. And she doesn't want to walk Bullet. Came into this game with 108 batting average. Well, she misses again, 3 0. On a three for 30, or excuse me, on a seven for 37 hitter. Make it four for 37. The 3 0 pitch. Not even close. Beth Torina has got to be seething over that. Blunt came in four for 37 and draws a four pitch base on balls. There's a strike to L. Carter. Her first name is E double L E, pronounced L like the initial. I like that. That's kind of cool. L. Carter. She's the shortstop. And like a teammate earlier, she wears only one batting glove. Casanova throwing a lot of pitches because she just continues to fall behind hitters. We are so glad you've chosen to spend some time with us this evening. Call a friend and tell them the game is on. Carter's got three triples. As That's we, unusual, isn't as it? As we so often say, it's very hard to do in softball ballparks. She's got the same amount of triples as she does doubles. The and two walks. Two. And walks at three. 
Pleasants to second for one and no throw from Petty. So Carter reaches on a fielder's choice. Blunt is retired six to four. And now it's Bacon representing the top of the order. L. Carter has eight stolen bases. She's been caught twice. And she's on and the she's move. She's gone. The peg is late. It's a stolen base for Carter. Ball's low. She's got to pick it up. But golly, she's got that stolen. It's not even close. The Warhawks like to run frequently, and they're pretty darn good at it. Creating offense. And when you don't hit home runs, you find other ways exactly. to uh, become effective offensively. Hit and run, steals. The 1-1 one, one to Bacon is high as she Pull that bat back. High and tight to a slapper. I don't want any part of that pitch. This start has been a little bumpy for Casanova as we play in the second inning. The 2 1 pitch. Fouled away. The Warhawks. Our 16th in Division One in stolen bases. They're 67 of 81, including one tonight. So only 15 teams in America have more stolen bases than the Warhawks. And that changeup got hung up and hits the dirt before it got to the plate. Carson getting a workout behind the plate. A liner up the middle for a base hit. Briggs comes up throwing. It's Good coming throw. through. Safe. Now the second tag and still ruled safe. Beth Torina quickly came out of the dugout She's and wants, asking. Yep. wants a replay on this. And we're going to have a challenge by LSU. Yeah, she was out before the play was even finished. How about... Uh, Bacon, though. Is she two for two? Yes, she is at the top of the order. I really didn't see the slide at home. I was watching the throw. I think she was safe. LSU but was challenging the call at home plate. Carson was certainly not obstructing. Does she get her? Did she get her foot? because she didn't get anything else. So we'll get the word just a moment after rock, scissors, paper was executed a few times. <laughs> I don't know how you can overrule this. It's I don't either. After review, the call stands at home plate. So the Warhawks regain the lead on the RBI single by Bacon. I think Beth Serena is making a change in the circle, though. Has a pretty good rise ball. She can mix speeds. She's a little erratic at times, but when she's on, she's really good. Yep, she was a pitch away from a perfect game against Alabama. Chafin throws a little bit of everything in her repertoire. Teams have not hit her very often. She's only allowed 42 hits in those 55 innings. That's an excellent hits to innings pitch ratio. This is the best hitter for the Warhawks at the plate, Karis Platt, who hit a short pop-up to McKee at third base last time. A runner at second with two outs, a run in. Three to two, ULM leads. 
Best batting average and the most hits. And a liner to center field. Briggs doesn't have to move much. And she takes that one through nine. We're hitting the ball, driving in runs. Carly Petty has been steady Petty for the Tigers, a 385 average. This is her 21st start. Playing second base about as well as you can. It's just turns the double play with Pleasance, just absolutely gorgeous. And she's got the best on base percentage on the team at 493. In a shoe tied. She too has been very difficult to strike out just four times this year. The last time I mentioned that, Pleasant struck out <laughs> yeah, looking. About to say. We've talked about uh, eight seniors on this team. Petty is one of them. And a whole lot of left handed batters. They just, the parade just keeps going, coming up. There are eight left handed batters in this lineup. And the lefties do a good job of utilizing the whole field. Thompson handles that ground ball at third base, gets it over to Buck for the out. Petty is retired five to three. And it brings on Rudity. The only right handed batter in the lineup tonight is Kelly Lynch. I think there's only five righties on the whole team. You know, that's a bit unusual because from the total population, only 11% are left handed. Well, Beth Tarina has found a bunch of them. She must know where to look. Edwards can't get it over to first base in time. She was a little bit indecisive yeah. on whether to charge it or retreat. Yeah, she backed up on that ball, and I think when she did it, that was it. Rute could run that out. She runs well. And that infield hit gives her five consecutive games in which she has hit safely. LSU's longest hitting streak at the moment belongs to Briggs who had the infield hit in the first inning and that moved her hitting streak to eight. They are playing Carson to get to left field. There's a huge hole between first and second. Carson has been a halftime starter. This is her 16th start and her 17th appearance. Eight driven in. Batting 250, nine for 36. There's a little sliver of a foul ball. Carson and Macy Bergeron are dividing time behind the plate. That's a good pitch. Carson would like to see that one again. Victoria Abrams, the former Tiger back uh, in 2020. I didn't think she'd pitch tonight. Edwards to Buck for the out. Rudity moved to second base. Here's Maddox McKee, who's batting for the first time. She, of course, was inserted into the lineup a few weeks ago when Danica Coffey suffered that tragic ACL injury to her knee in a collision with a catcher as they were both trying for a ball on a bunt. And she's gone for the season. She has indicated she will come back and play next year for the Tigers which is great news for this LSU team 
but it did open up a spot for Maddox McKee, the freshman. Doing a great job. There's Danica back on the back row. And she's already been operated on, so she's in her rehab period. It's just a freak thing. Oh, that right ball is right legs. between the wickets. The runner coming to the plate. Here's the throw. A slide safe at the plate. Maddox McKee delivers and takes second base on the throw through. Tigers have some good looking freshmen. Madison McKee is one of them. She hits this ball on a line right back up the middle and right through her legs. Can't react that quick. We are all tied up again. Newland in her last two at bats has hit home runs. And she said. She had every, that grand slam against Texas A&M in her last at bat before this game. And she led off the uh, game with a home run. She said that's what she's trying to do every time she comes up. She wants to hit a home run. Well, who doesn't? Well, people don't usually say it out loud. <laughs> that's true. But she's also hitting for a very high average. And she can spray the ball around. And plays a dang good left field. Yes, she does. She's got a 486 batting average, nearly 500 with runners in scoring position. And she's got McKee at second base after the RBI base hit. That's a little bit elevated. Two and one, two outs, a run in, a 3-3 ball game in the bottom of the second. Abrams wanted that call. That's nubbed to the left side. And a good stretch after the throw by Carter from shortstop. Newland is retired, Prince Games. And you saw ULM with a 5-4 and four record in the middle of the pack. Megan Brown leads it off. Followed by Andy Edwards and Layla Thompson. This is Raylan Chafin in relief. She has faced one batter and induced a fly ball out. Emily Casanova started and never really got into a no. rhythm. She gave up four hits, three runs in an inning and two thirds, did not walk anybody, nor did she strike out anybody. Just couldn't really work ahead of hitters. Didn't have much working for her tonight. Happens. Actually, she did walk one. That was a blunt on four pitches. One and two, Chafin rocks and fires. It's fouled back. Chafin had a sister who played for Northwestern State in Natchitoches out of the Southland Conference. Softball playing family. Brown had a base hit last time and was thrown out at the plate eventually. One, two, sliced foul. Beth Tarina always comments about how fierce a competitor Chafin is. As we said, her probably her finest mo moment as a Tiger was she was a pitch away, I think, from having a perfect game against Alabama. She was the SEC Freshman of the Week that week. The one two off the mark wide. McKee, Pleasance, Petty, and Gutierrez on the infield. Newland, Briggs, and Rudity in the outfield. Carson catching. Chafin's 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. She came with a high heat. Good looking rise ball there, moving through the zone. And this is what Chafin can do. She can heat your chili. She's got good spin. She's got that slow wind up and then boom, the ball gets there. Annie Edwards is next. She had an RBI double last time. Is it raining out there? Look at you that. know, rain is a four letter word <laughs> during a softball or baseball game. Dirty. 
A steady, steady drizzle. What time is it? Because our forecast said storms expected perhaps around seven o'clock. No way. Six fifty-nine. They were a, a minute late. Randy. And now the rain is falling with a little more gusto. Oh yeah, we've got us a little downpour now. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Edwards off the plate. This is when our camera folks, and they are excellent, they are earning their money tonight in the rain. Are they not get paid enough? Here's the 2-1 pitch with one out. 3-3 three, three ball game. And he's like that. He's like the ball low all night long. It's been a symmetrical game. Each team scored two in the first. Each team scored one in the second. Each team has three runs, four hits, and no errors. The pitch. Hammered on a hop and then off the glove of McKee. It's rolling down into foul territory. Newland finally comes up with it. And Edwards is perched at second base. Warhawks. Oh, go away. No, they uh, they Every swing inning. the bat. They Every are not, inning. They are not passive at the plate. No, they're not. Every inning. Team batting average is at 291. That's her seventh double. We're talking about Andy Edwards. And she's had two doubles tonight. This brings on Layla Thompson. Petty is in front of it. Over to Gutierrez for the out. Here's Brooklyn Lippert, who was thrown out by Casanova on a comebacker in the first inning. Ball one. And that shower we had seems to have subsided. It didn't last long. No, it didn't. It doesn't, it still doesn't look great out there, but what'd you say the color of the sky was today? Sooty. Sooty. There's ah. a base hit through the ah. left side. McKee and Pleasance were split by that bouncer. And Lippert has an RBI single, and the Warhawks have scored in every inning. Teams are just trading, trading leads. This Sunbelt Conference team has been pesky and leads it four to three. Here's Jacelyn Buck. She's first pitch swinging and sends a liner to left field. And these Warhawks come up and they take their cuts. Scouting report is swing the bat. Three hits in the inning off of Chafin. That pitch was on the outside part of the plate, if at all over the plate, and she was able to pull it yep. through the left side. So here is Blunt, the catcher. Lippert at second base, Buck on first. Plate umpire Clarence Bourne goes to uh, fetch some dry softballs. And Blunt, who's only hitting a little over 100, walked on four pitches last time. McKee grabs the ground ball, gets it over to Gutierrez. And the inning, it, there are 10 games tomorrow in the league. Not a lot of action tonight. Memphis was to have played at Tennessee, but that game has been canceled because of weather. And Texas A&M is playing Prairie View out of the SWAC. And the Aggies have a 2-0 lead in the bottom of the third inning in College Station.
Here's Briggs. I think our shower has passed. This is the 16th meeting between these teams. LSU has won the first 15 games, including 11 in a row here in Baton Rouge. Briggs had a base hit in the first inning, and that moved her hitting streak to eight games. Of course, ULM has had a program for a very long time. Much longer than the Tigers. Briggs, Pleasance, and Gutierrez, two, three, and four in the LSU lineup, will take their swings against Victoria Abrams. And Briggs is aboard again. 1984 for the Warhawks. Of course, they were called Northeast Indians. Right. That's the first walk from Abrams, so she has not hurt herself to this point. Pleasant struck out looking on a pitch at the knees last time. She thought it was lower than that. She had the wow look on her face after she was rung up. We'll have a little pitch. Ovarian cancer has raised a ton of money since she's been here. Abrams finds the strike zone and levels the count at one on Pleasance. That's elevated. Yeah, she's having trouble finding the strike zone now also. Briggs walk to open the inning. She represents the tying run. ULM leads four to three with two in the first, one in the second, and one in the third. LSU with two in the first and one in the second. Three balls and a strike, a hitter's count to Pleasance. She picks on it and drives it through on the ground into right field. Briggs has no trouble finding third base. Never Taylor stopped. Pleasance comes through with a ground single through the right side of the infield. Never stopped. At Andy Edwards is playing significantly closer to second base, waiting on that steal. And look, look at how close she is to the bag. So it's a huge hole between first and second. Had she been in normal position, that ball would have been right at her. Yep. Saw that uh, early on. Run batted in last time. She can get another RBI here with runners at first and third. Pleasance at first, Briggs on third. Nobody out. Ball one to Gutierrez. Kelly Lynch is on deck. The outfield very deep and straight away. That's high, and we've got a pinch runner at first, and she takes second. And a collision down there, and a Warhawk went down. Yeah. That is uh, Savannah Bedell, who was running for Pleasance. Little collision there. Bedell says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to knock you down. But this base is mine. There's Savannah, who's just stolen second base. That's a strike. He's been consistent. He likes it low. Clarence Bourne calling Beth. balls and strikes. Michael Thibodeau is at first base. Beth Tarina kind of walked up a little bit, didn't quite agree with that call. Laura King is the umpire at third. The 3-1 pitch. Elevated and the bases are loaded. Well, Gutierrez extends her on base streak as she reaches on the wall. That's 20 straight games in which she has reached base. And this is where Kelly Lynch has really been money for the Tigers. 
She has really stepped up in prime time at bats. She's making her 27th start of the year. Swings on the first pitch, pops it up. An infield fly rule is in effect. And Edwards grabs it. But not this time. <laughs> this brings on Petty. Who's hitting 385 uh, coming into the game. Petty has grounded out to third. An RBI opportunity here. The Tigers trail by one. They've got the bases loaded and uh, only one out. A walk to Briggs, a single by Pleasance, a walk to Gutierrez. And after the pop up off the bat of Lynch, it's Petty's turn. She's three for six with the bases loaded this year and has driven in seven runs in situations like this one. Change up came in awfully slow there. Two balls and no strikes. Petty can afford to be selective. Rudity is on deck. That's down Main Street for a strike. Maddie Nichols in relief of Victoria Abrams. LSU tonight one for four with runners in scoring position. Now we've got a 2-2 two -two count. Had a lot of base runners, a lot of action. Twelve hits in three innings of play. Seven runs scored. But it's kind of like pulling teeth out there. Here's the 2-2 pitch with the bases loaded. Carly Petty stayed off of it. Nichols to the plate. A changeup. Hit pretty well out toward right center field. The two outfielders collide. It's caught. There is a tag and a score. We've got a brand new ball game. And fortunately, both Lippert and Brown in the outfield get up and appear to be okay. Yeah, it looked like uh, it was going to be a big time collision. I Petty. believe it was Brown, the right fielder, who was able to make that catch. It is. Tigers had Briggs tagging all the way. She scores. Sacrifice fly for Petty to tie the game but a near disastrous collision in right center field. And everybody moved up a bit, so that's some good base running behind Briggs. And now it's Ruderty. How about that? Each team has scored two in the first, one in the second, and one they're in the just, third. They're just answering each other. Brown is a, is she a lefty out there? Yes, she is left-handed defensively. That, that helped in that play. This is hit pretty well. It's carrying it's the other way, and it is up and over. Pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Power comes from with all up and down this lineup, but Rudity, Newland, not the biggest in stature Tigers on the team, but they have power. Her fourth home run of the year accounts for three runs, a three-run blow that just kept carrying out toward left center field. And you're Bacon right. makes an effort, leaps, but can't get it just out of her reach. And Mackenzie Ruderty measures a three-run home run over the left center field wall. And the Tigers have their first lead tonight. And you're right, that ball just kept carrying. I I'm, wasn't sure that that was a home run ball. Here's Hannah Carson. 
The first two runs in this inning have been charged to Abrams. The last two to the reliever Nichols. As you said in the opener, wait, the Warhawk pitchers struggle a little bit in the circle. Well, they've given up a lot of home runs. Yes, they have. And right now they've given up 12 in the last 11 games. Newland and Rudity have home runs tonight for LSU. The 1 1 to Carson with two outs and the base is empty. Ooh, good looking change up there. That one floated right through the strike zone. It's like a monarch butterfly just easing its way to the plate. Beautiful creature. The one two. Upstairs. LSU has been out hit seven to six, but leads it seven to four on the strength of the Rudity three run home run. And that's high to Hannah Carson. I would account for the home runs. A lot of the pitches are elevated. A sinking line drive is handled by L. Carter, the shortstop, batting in the fourth against reliever Raylan Chafin. Oh, there out. goes the bat. The ball goes one way, the bat goes the other. McKee came up with the catch at third base. See McKee, she doesn't get distracted by the bat flying. She started in and then yep. has to retreat and leap to get it. So L. Carter with that looper down to McKee. And here is Bacon at the top of the order. And she has been sizzling tonight. Two for two. Sizzling and crispy. The 1-0. Oh. Ooh, that's a nice pitch. Yes, that it is. throws her. You see this. What is this? A little backdoor curve, I think. We said Chafin can throw it all. And she's got some heat. Her motion is deliberate, it's slow, and then she snaps into action at the yep. end of the at the end of the delivery. Can kind of lull you to sleep a little bit and then bam, here comes the ball. And she does a good job of hiding her pitches. That's a strike on the outer part of the plate at the knees. If you can lay the ball there every time, you can make a good living. Absolutely. And he likes it there. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Little bit high. Three balls, two strikes on Bacon with one out. And we'll do it again. This Warhawk team has scored in every inning. And there's ball four. Bacon has been on base three times. She's having a good night. Well, I bet you have spotted former Tiger Amanda Doyle in the audience tonight. Yeah, she's right behind home plate. There she is looking down at her phone. Amanda, we're talking about you. Somebody will tell her, I promise. Oh, yeah. Here's Platt. She's a teacher now and engaged to be married, so congratulations. 
to a member of the LSU staff. One and oh to the ULM top hitter. And now one and one. LSU has kept Platt off the bases so far. She has popped up and lined out. There's Amanda Doyle. With her engagement ring. She could plow a few balls oh, over the wall. Oh, she could. And great glove. Saw Beth Torina talking to someone in the stands, and I couldn't figure out who, who it was for a little bit. The one and two pitch to Platt. Coming from Raylan Chapin. That's an off speed pitch and a beauty. Hello, good night, and goodbye. That's not something that Chapin throws with great frequency, but that was a oh, really yes. good one. You just see the effort on that pitch, and I love Chapin. She always gets a little excited when she gets a K. How about him, regular? Megan Brown. Here's Megan Brown, who has singled and struck out. This is the second time she's faced she's Chapin. Gone. Runner going. Peg down is pretty good one, but not in time to get Bacon. So Bacon steals her 19th base in 20 tries. Let's see here. Kind of hesitates for a second. I thought Carson was a little bit late yeah. recognizing yep, exactly. the uh, runner Bacon on the move. I don't know if anybody didn't help her, but you're correct on that one. And this is the Warhawks game. They'll try to take as many bases with their feet as possible. They're not scared to steal bases. And they have scored in every inning. This would be a first. The Tigers could shut them down. That's a good stop by Carson. Brown has been good with runners in scoring position. Her average is 347 on the year, but 419 in situations like these. Now the count is two and two. Got another good crowd tonight, Lynn. Midweek game. We had an unbelievable crowd out here on Sunday. It was bark in the park. The dogs were here, and so were their masters. One of the things that eluded me in that game was just prior to the Grand Slam home run by Allie Newland, she high-fived a dog. <laughs> Time out here, so. Coach can go over there and talk to her runner. Both teams in the dark uniforms tonight. <laughs> Megan Brown has singled and struck out. And the 3-2 pitch. Spoiled into the net. That last pitch reached 70 miles an hour. Wow. I That's good heat. I've never seen uh, Chafin throw it uh, that hard. Gutierrez gets in front of it and the short of the SEC. Oh, yeah. OU, number one, Texas, number five. What a conference. That's a nice bunt. McKee is out on a very close play at first base. Nichols really got to it and does get her by just an inch or two. Very nicely done by Nichols. There was no room to spare. So this brings on Newland at the top of the order. She has homered to lead off the game. 
and bounced out to the shortstop. And Nichols starts her with an off-speed pitch and misses. Now I've got an oddity that was just been made aware to me. This is not my research, but I think this is fascinating. The University of Louisiana Monroe, which of course is known as ULM. Well, guess what? In Germany, there's a ULM Germany. It's Ulm, Germany, the birthplace of Albert Einstein. Oh, wow. And I've got a quote from dear Albert. <laughs> the difference between stupidity and genius is that genius has its limits. <laughs> the man not only knew physics, he knew human nature. But Albert Einstein, born in ULM. Um, Germany. <laughs> ULM right now on spring break. 2-2 Two -two pitches upstairs. But Yvette, we continue to dig deep into the recesses of trivia. And educate. And I promise you no other broadcast this year <laughs> will make a reference to Ohm, Germany, and Albert Einstein. We do have a uh, young man. This is hit way back, and it's caught on the warning track by Megan Brown. I thought she had another one. So did I. But Megan Brown stayed right with it and made the catch on the dirt in front of the right field wall. That's an interesting star on their uniform. Yeah, on the sleeve? Yeah, it looks like a Texaco uh, sign. No, that's, it, that's not what it is, but. Look out. Changeup kind of got stuck in her hand. Briggs has signaled and uh, singled and walked and stolen a base and scored twice. ULM was founded in 1931. It has an enrollment of about 8,200. Ace the Warhawk is the mascot. That might find center field. It does. Briggs has two hits and been on base three times. ULM was known for pharmacy school. You bet. I'm sure it still is. And you know what? It has the most water skiing championships yes, of any does. school in the United States. Yes, it does. Here's Taylor Pleasance, who's one for two. Two outs and the Tigers lead by three. That dropped in for a strike. Famous alumni from ULM, Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. Ben Sheets. Good an pitcher. An Olympian and, of course, a great pitcher with a Braves. Great pitcher. Don Shows, he won eight state championships in football. Football. High in school. In 5A at school West football. Monroe. And Tim Brando, the broadcaster. Oh, wow. And Ben Sheets is, I think, originally from Baton Rouge. If my memory serves, he was pitching when Smoke Laval was up there as the head coach. And of course, Smoke later became the LSU coach for four years. Ben Sheets' cousin, Andy Sheets, was an infielder for the Tigers of LSU. Here's the 2-1 to Pleasance. The runner is on the move, and Briggs is safe. Again, Briggs got a change up to move along, and that helped. Thompson is a um, acrobat over there at shortstop, avoiding this. I'm not so sure she didn't that get she her. didn't touch her hand right there inadvertently, but the umpire right on the scene. No challenge. Pleasant struck out in the first looking. She rammed a single on the ground into right field last time. Briggs Good. is all out all the time. Yes, she is. 
If she were a poker player, she would be all in on every hand. On that base hit, she rounded first so hard trying to draw a throw and reading the outfield. It's just fun to watch play. Her parents were here last weekend. I don't know if they stayed. They're from California. Pleasant draws the base on balls. The second one from the reliever, Nichols. She walked the first batter she faced in the third. And she has walked Pleasants with two outs here in the fourth. And we're going to have a conference. The adult libations. Are we making a change? We look like we couldn't quite make up our mind, but I think we might have a change. And the bullpen gate has been opened. And I think the third pitcher of the night is being summoned. And this is Gianni Hewlett. And we will come back in just a moment as we continue play as ULM makes a pitching change at the bottom of the fourth. LSU out in front, seven to four so far. This is the third pitcher for the Warhawks, Gianni Hewlett, a junior from Bryant, Arkansas. It's our first non-Louisiana pitcher of the night. No record, only 14 and a third innings. She has walked six and struck out five. She'll throw a curve, a drop, and a changeup. Not an overpowering pitcher. And making her eighth appearance of the year, mostly in short relief. You see the curve drop and change. She's a lefty, so it's going to be moving down and away, mostly to all these lefty hitters for LSU. Somebody out there watching the game needs to tell us what the star on uh, ULM's jersey means on that sleeve. What well, happened I think they here? ruled a, Just a, a ball for delay. So it's a one and no count to Gutierrez. And now one and one. Raylene batting 344, five homers. A lot of those came early, 29 driven in. She goes the other way. The ball is sinking and oh, caught nice with play. a diving effort by Bacon. Nice play. All right, somebody out there in the universe answered the question. We'll get to it right after this pop-up is caught by Gutierrez. And that was... Andy Edwards, who's retired for the first time after a pair of doubles. What's the star mean? All right, well, Cindy Ann, thank you for answering that. She attached a picture of an Army Air Corps P-40 aircraft nicknamed the Warhawk. Ah. The star on the side of the aircraft was the recognition symbol for United States military aircraft at the beginning of World War II. Well, it all makes sense yeah. now, doesn't it? Thank you. Hence the Warhawks. Got another uh, kind of trivia item. L is French for she. That's pretty, isn't it? Now you should have known that. Well. I I mean, I'm sitting next to a bona fide French-speaking Cajun. Uh, but that's not Cajun. Well, it might be. I just know all the slang stuff. And, unfortunately, the curse words. A few words you're not supposed to know, right? <laughs> Thompson pokes it toward the right side. Petty is up with it. Gutierrez is waiting. Two outs. That's pretty cool that they... Uh, have that symbol 
from the military aircraft on their jersey. It really is. I like that. And I would have never made that association. No. So whoever I, sent that in, we are appreciative. Thank very you. Very appreciative. Well, I couldn't figure out what it had to do with anything, so I had to ask it. You just ask and you, you get answers. Brooklyn Lippert is one for two. The Warhawks have had at least one base runner in every inning. In fact, they've had two base runners in three innings. This would be the first time that they have not had a representative on base if Lippert is retired. She pops it up and Gutierrez was charging and makes the catch. So. They have definitely uh, applied pressure every inning. LSU gets off. The, those two are UL and Texas State. What are those teams going to do in the Pac-10? It's anybody's guess. Of course, uh, all but a couple of them are accounted for in new conferences. Used to be the premier league in college softball. UCLA and Arizona dominating for so many years. Now it's the team from Oklahoma that has become the dominant program. Well, it's just really amazing. Nobody has ever had the record Oklahoma has in the last two or three years. So I read the other day they're going to erect a statue in her honor on campus. Pretty cool. The 2 1 pitch to Lynch from Gianna Hewlett. Hewlett replaced Nichols, who replaced the starter, Abrams. That didn't miss by much, but it missed. So Lynch is aboard for the first time. And here's Petty. That's Serena. Is she getting a pinch? Not doing anything. Just had a little conversation with Blue while the uh, Pitcher and catcher were doing their thing. Oh, she does. She does have a pinch runner at first. Jillio at first, running. Fastest Tiger on the team. Petty has grounded out to third. And drove in a run with a sacrifice fly to right field. You can see all of Hewlett's pitches are moving away from these lefties for LSU. And there's a bunch of them. Two and oh. Four runs, seven hits for the Warhawks. Seven runs, seven hits for the Tigers. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Tigers have been successful stealing bases tonight.
Now the 2-1, that slap foul off to the left side. The count is level at two. Enrollment at ULM is 8,000 students, 8,215. Monroe, Louisiana, Funroe, Louisiana. Now the 2 2 to Petty. That's steered high and away. Three balls, two strikes. Gillio at first base. Let's see if she's moving. That's fouled back. ULM softball history. They have one tournament appearance, 1997. And they had a young lady named Sarah Dawson, and she was a good one, pitcher. You know, I omitted one uh, famous alumnus from ULM. How about Stan Humphreys? Ooh, football quarterback, right? Yep. And then did he play for the Washington Redskins? Won a Super Bowl and then was the starter in a Super Bowl with San Diego. And a national champion at ULM. So he went from the Indians to the Redskins. Doug Peterson also. Good quarterbacks. And then he became a coach. You know your football, don't I, you? Oh, I, football is my life. I love football. College football. Petty waiting the 3-2 pitch. Lifted toward left field bacon coming on and she's got it. So that's the first out and it brings on Ruder D who has an infield hit and a three run home run. There goes Gilio. The throw is high. Gilio slides head first and makes it. And the Tigers have, what, four stolen bases tonight. I think this is the most they've had in a game. Not until you get thrown out. Keep running. Gilio would score on any kind of base hit to the outfield. To the left side. That drops out of the strike zone. It's two and one with one out. Had Rudy le uh, leaning, but she could hold back. She may have one of the best arms from the outfield in the SEC. Well, she can sling it. Longest throw from Right field a third and you're right she's she's got a cannon. And not only can she generate a lot of velocity her accuracy is amazing on most throws. And if she has some significance to her war paint. That's a strike and a good pitch from Hewlett. It's humid out there tonight. We had a little rain around 7 o'clock. It lasted maybe 10 minutes. Play was not halted. Three balls, two strikes. Gilio at second base with one out. Seven to four Tigers. Gilio will take third. The out is recorded at first as Buck got in front of it and turns it into a three unassisted put out with Gilio moving up 60 feet. And Hannah Carson now, who's over two, comes to the plate, but it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter. 
Michaela Walker will bat for Hannah Carson. Kayla Walker in the midweek game at Nichols hit a towering home run. And there you see her one home run. These are all Tigers that we will see probably next year in more prominent roles. Eight starting seniors in this lineup. Walker separates her hands on the handle of the bat by, oh, maybe a half inch. Just a little bit of a gap between her hands in that, that stance. You can see it right there as we zoom in and give you a look at that gap. Here's the 1-0. That's a nice pitch on the outside part of the plate. Victoria Abrams pitched the first two innings. Maddie Nichols worked an inning in two thirds and now Gianna Hewlett. The one one. Blunt was setting up outside and it was wasted too far wide. Walker is a sophomore from Marietta Georgia. A lot of good softball played in Mar Marietta. National tournaments there. When you were coaching, and of course it's been over a decade now since you've been on the sideline, but what generally were the, the states that, that, that you looked to first? Well, Georgia is very good softball. Of course, for so many years it was the West Coast. Um, California was leading the pack. Texas was always good, Oklahoma. And, you know, how about Florida? The tight, yes, Florida. Yeah, they kind, they kind of had a didn't start quite like uh, the rest of the South. They were playing slow pitch a lot until uh, until they decided to go with the the other game. But for so many years, it was California, West Coast, the weather, the population. But it's you can find great players all over the country now. The sport has really just blossomed, and I credit TV for that. Here's Maddox McKee. She has an RBI single. And Texas. she was thrown out trying to bunt on a very close play. Texas was a good state to recruit to because sure. it's so close to our border. Well, especially the Houston area, some really great softball Absolutely. there. Absolutely. The 1 0 to McKee. That's a strike. It's a small sample size for McKee, and she is a freshman, and she's playing third base for the first time. That's not her normal position. It's likely she could move to shortstop next year to replace the uh, All America Pleasance. But I think a bet with, again, a very short sample time. But I, I believe we're looking at, 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 at a future star in McKee. Oh, I do too. She, she handles the bat so well. She's gotten adjusted at third base. She then seems Danica. to play with joy too, and that's important, especially if you're a rookie oh, yeah, and you're not all, overwhelmed. She's always smiling. Of course, Danica Coffey can come back next year. Oh yeah, so. well I think McKee might be right. shortstop next year. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Hit on a line the other way. Bacon started in and then reverses. Bacon was almost burnt. She was on the night for the two teams combined. And Taylor Brodick has grabbed a bat. Taylor Brodick will uh, hit first here in a pinch hit roll for Buck. A lot of Louisiana kids on this uh, ULM team. That's a strike from Raylan Chafin. 
You know, we missed Chuck Finley in that list of alumni. Yeah, somebody. From ULM. Somebody alerted that uh, of that mistake. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Finley. Absolutely. Well, there have been some great athletes there. Two and one to the pinch hitter, Brodick. But was the enrollment always around 8,000? Seems like they might have lost some students, right? I always thought it was a little bigger. You know, yeah, really I couldn't know. speak with authority. Right. But What's Northwestern? Pardon? Northwestern. About the same. Tech. I think a little larger. The 2-2. Two -two. Louisiana Tech for our listeners, Louisiana Tech. ULM and uh, Northwestern, all up in the upper part of the state. Grambling. Grambling, yep. LSU Shreveport. The 2-2 to Brodick from the reliever Chafin. She's pitched well since coming on in the second inning. And she got her on strikes. Brodick goes down swinging. Good pitch there, and Chafin's velocity is up. So we're being told that Louisiana Tech is the biggest university up north. That's three strikeouts for Chafin. You know, and had she contacted the ball, she could have been out of the box, but she did not make a contact, and we haven't seen that call this year. We, I have not. No, yeah. you're right. It used to be fairly frequent. Oh, yeah, it was a big. But the hitters have made adjustments. Despite all of the wailing and gnashing of the teeth, the first uh, few months it was in effect. Not really a point of emphasis anymore. It's that O word that's the point of emphasis right now. Obstruction. Not even pitching. Got rid of the. Uh, Basically not even calling illegal pitches now. Blunt at the plate. Rams one foul. Well, Chafin has retired six in a row. She settled in. Throwing well and throwing hard. And there has not been A ball out of the infield on Chafin since the second inning. Other than a couple of singles, but but only one fly ball out since Chafin came on in the second inning with two outs. She a has, lot of ground outs. She has good stuff. It's just a matter of putting it all together. The 2-2. Two -two. And Blunt reaches for that and couldn't find it. Chafin goes back to back with strikeout. She's got four on the night. And that ball is intentionally left short and in the dirt. And she, the intention is to get her to strike out on a pitcher's pitch. Here comes L. Carter. And you said E L L E in French is what? She? I knew you were going to ask me that. She. Bell has reached on a fielder's choice and scored and looped out to McKee at third base last time. This is McKee again leaping and then gunning over to Gutierrez, a three up, three down inning. That's two in a row. Oregon, Oregon State. No, they, they did not. But the Big Ten is now the Big 20. Yeah. Or potentially the Big 20. Let's fly across. Because they're, they're talking about Clemson and Florida State going to the Big Ten. Let's fly clear across the country for competition. That is a major problem. Oh. For softball, for baseball, when they play so many games. Here's Allie Newland at the top of the order. She has homered, grounded out, and flied to right. Oh 
I think a bet in some sports they're going to find neutral ground or at some school in the middle so to speak to, to help out on travel and play a Satellite. series of Satellite. maybe a tournament or two or three games just to try to condense that that travel because if you went back and forth from the East Coast to the West Coast multiple times a year it would it would really be an egregious trip both financially and and of course from a a time standpoint but remember they're student athletes what does that have to do with anything with this these conference alignments make it very tough on you can the, put the name in quotes sometimes yeah. make it very tough on those athletes that compete so many times in a week so I think some sports will lend themselves to to a, a gathering at uh, mutually advantageous locations. We'll see how that all works out. Yeah, you know, and some of those student athletes committed to those schools because they wanted that certain rivalry, the Big Ten, to compete against the Big Ten and or Pac-10, and now everything's changed so much. The 0-2 pitch. Good effort, but. And there's a base hit for Newland, her second. Good effort on the right side of the infield, but that ball just sunk off the, before it got to the first baseman. And I love that Hewlett hurried over there. She just can't get pitchers to go over there and co cover first base. Like it's automatic with baseball. So that's hit number eight for LSU, the second for Newland. And this brings on Briggs. She's had a good day. Two singles, a stolen base. Two runs scored, actually two stolen bases and a walk. Two for two, been on base three times, scored twice, and has stolen two bases. Pleasance is on deck. LSU leading seven to four in the sixth. Stee, right. She looked like she was swinging away there. Everything this young woman does is all out. Come to practice, she practices hard like that in everything she does, every single repetition. One of the things that's going to work in the Tigers' favor when it comes to postseason seeding is the fact that they have played LSU has played 12 games this season already against nationally ranked opponents and there will be a lot more with the bulk of the SEC season still ahead of it but uh, LSU is a remarkable 10 and 2 against nationally ranked teams had a fantastic season That's a strike. And we got a still. Ooh, we got I hung the, up. I think the runner thought it was ball four. Yep, they did. Too many throws in this rundown, but they will get the out. I think Newland thought it was ball four and started to jog. And we go to three and two on Briggs. Carter over to first base to get Briggs. And there are two outs. Two, four, three, six, four on that put out of Newland. Here's Pleasance. This is likely to be her last at bat in this game. The Warhawks down by three right now. Hewlett's and they will a, have the top of the order coming up in the seventh. Hewlett's done a nice job since she's come in. She has. She Trying to has, stop the bleeding. She has held LSU off the scoreboard. Pleasance with that closed stance. Feet close together. 
She's one of uh, three Tigers who have graduated and is in graduate school. Briggs and Gutierrez are the other two. You see the SEC graduate patch on her shoulder? Let's see if they turn her loose on 3 and 0. Oh. That's ball 4. That backdoor curveball is just barely missing. It's a good pitch. LSU is looking to reach the NCAA championship tournament for the 18th consecutive season this year. Oh, they'll definitely be in regionals. And I would think their resume is very, very good to host. Both regionals and super regionals. Gutierrez with a count of one and one. Raylene does not have a base hit, but she did draw a walk, which moves her on base streak to 20 consecutive games. And the one one. Right there for a strike. We've said this probably after the 10th game of the season. She is definitely the most improved Tiger since last year. Worked very hard in the offseason to get bigger and stronger, and it has paid off. She taps it back to the circle. Hewlett gets the out at first, and we move forward as we go to the seventh <laughs> inning. LSU, and she is the pitcher of record for the Tigers. She's looking for her ninth win of the season against two setbacks. And she's working with a three-run lead in the seventh. It's Lourdes Bacon at the plate. She's been good at the top of the order. She's been good defensively in left field. A base hit and a run scored in the first. A base hit and an RBI in the second. A walk and a stolen base in the fourth. What's shaking, Bacon? She has been. Platt and Brown will follow. This is the best part of the order for the Warhawks. Yeah, they have been very effective, as you've said, though. We had a lot of action in the first three innings, and then it just kind of settled down. Well, that's when Chafin came on, and that's when uh, Hewlett also pitched well in relief for ULM. Started hitting their spots. <laughs> Working ahead, hitting their spots, and controlling hitters. Chafing, Chafin racking up a few K's in the process. By the way, Yvette, somebody has uh, contacted you and asked about umpire protocol behind the plate. We'll try to explain it. The question basically was why do college softball umpires wait so long to make a physical indication of a strike or a ball? And it bugs me, too, to be quite honest, but that's the protocol. That's what yeah. softball umpires are taught as opposed to baseball, which is more immediate. Yeah. Oh, there's a really good changeup. Chafin is using all the tools in the toolbox, but why is, what, do you know the reason why I, that would I, be? I don't know, but it's basically 1,001, 1,002, and then make the call. So there's your answer as to why it's delayed. They just want it to be delayed. Here's Platt. LSU has handled her so far 0 for 3. She came in batting 413 with 45 hits. That's a huge number. 
one and two in the Warhawk lineup have been very good. And that, that might be a hit. Look at oh, Pleasant. Never mind. Got her at first base. Never mind. They will appeal this, I think. They're going to challenge it. But Pleasance with one heck of a short hop pickup, transfer and sling. Are they? Yeah, okay. She ran off of the base, but they're going to go ahead and challenge it. But Pleasance just kind of came out of nowhere on that play. Base. Let's see what we got here, Lynn. This is so well done by Pleasance. Watch this short hop. That's that full extension using that six foot plus frame. And then with the arm angles we're talking about, gets it over. I don't think there's enough to change it. We will find out momentarily. After review, calling the field is upheld. So upheld means there was nothing to uh, that 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 the original call was was made correctly that they verified that it was made correctly stand means that uh, they're not going to overturn it because there was not enough evidence and of course overturned means that the reversal is made that's the terminology what a heck of a play by by pleasance to get Platt and now one out to go for the Tigers and Brown says no not yet Megan Brown collects her second base hit as she punches it sharply the other way. Top three hitters for ULM. Pesky, they're good. Pesky little hitters. They, they are. Uh, they're good. They utilize the dirt. They utilize the short game to perfection. And that's ripped cleanly on the ground. A couple of hops scooting into left field between McKee and Pleasance. But now here's the cleanup batter, Andy Edwards. She doubled in the first. She doubled in the second. And she popped up to Gutierrez last time. The Warhawks are down to their last out. They need another base runner to bring the tying run to the plate, although this is not a home run hitting team. Only six in the lineup today. Two strikes on Edwards, and the crowd, at least some of it, comes to its feet, sending out encouragement. As we talked about earlier, this is a good crowd for a Tuesday night. The 0-2 pitch dips low and away. Two in the first, one in the second, one in the third for ULM. Two in the first, one in the second, four in the third for the Tigers. We play in the seventh with two outs. And we go to a 2-2 count. Chafin to Edwards. This would be win number 30 for LSU against four defeats. The Warhawks would fall to 22 and 15 if they don't muster a comeback. Here's the pitch at 2-2. Hit high in the air and playable in left field. Newland squeezes it and LSU comes away with a victory. Raylan Chafin did a really nice job in relief. For that matter, so did Gianni Hughes.